What's up, Totem Pole Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Recruiting Trail. Today's episode 43, the Syracuse Orange. They're coming off a 6-7 and seven season, 2-6 and six in the ACC. We'll get into their top commits and transfer portal news. If you want more Syracuse content on Twitter, you can follow the Sideline Sports Network Syracuse page, which is scrolling in the ticker below. Shout out to Sideline Sports Network. As always, let's get into Syracuse right now. All right, Syracuse Orange, like I said, coming off a 6-7 and seven season, 2-6 and six in the ACC. They have the 46th ranked class nationally, 44th ranked class based on average commit grade. They have the 10th ranked class in the ACC and the 10th ranked class in the ACC based on average commit grade as well. They have the 15th ranked transfer portal class. And when you combine the transfer portal class and the recruiting class, they have the 35th ranked class combined nationally. That is 18 commits in the recruiting class, three of them being four stars, 15 of them being three stars. 10 transfer commits as of right now, which is January 3rd. So if anything comes out after that, just let me know in the comments. All of the data today, as you can see in the ticker and as you will see in this presentation, is all coming from 24-7 sports. So if on three rivals, ESPN, Recruit Certified, any of those other services have different rankings, different, you know, stars, anything like that. Just let me know that there's a difference, but trust me, I'm not the one making these evaluations. So we'll start with their portal news. They have 15 players leaving in the portal. Four linebackers led by Stephon Thompson, who had 51 tackles, a sack and a half, and a forced fumble this year. Four DBs, which is a total of like 17 tackles, five pass deflections, and one interception, so not much lost there. The D-line group is losing three people led by Terry Lockett, who had 24 tackles and two pass deflections last year. They're losing a running back and a tight end who didn't give any production on the field. They're losing a running back and Ike Daniels, who put up 103 yards on 5.7 a carry throughout the entirety of the season and an offensive line. Now to the positive, we're going to get into the top five transfers that are coming in for Syracuse. That is starting with Kyle McCord. 6'3", 215 from Ohio State. He has two years of eligibility remaining. He's a former five-star, uh, 46th ranked player in the portal, the 11th ranked quarterback in the portal. His 2023 stats, 65.8% completion percentage, 3,170 yards through the air, which is 265 yards per game. 24 touchdowns and six interceptions. Now, really, the only knock, because um, he is, you know, a good quarterback and definitely an upgrade from what Syracuse has had in the recent past. He just doesn't really add anything on the ground, but that's definitely not, you know, a make it or break it thing for this team, especially having, you know, your top running back coming back next year. Next up, Fadil, or Fadil, excuse me, Diggs. He's an edge from Texas A&M. He's 6'5", 250, and has one year of eligibility remaining. He was a former four-star. He was the 36th ranked player in the portal and the sixth ranked edge. His 2023 stats were 36 tackles, four sacks, and two passes defended. Next up is a wide receiver from Georgia, Zed Haynes, 6'1", 170, he only played in four games this year for the Bulldogs, so he should have four years of eligibility left if I'm understanding the redshirt rules correct. Former four-star, he was the 138th ranked player in the portal and the 27th ranked wide receiver. His 2023 stats, like I said, in only four games played, he had a catch for 20 yards. Uh, Georgia's staff was high on him, saying that he should develop into a very good wide receiver, so this should bode well for Syracuse in years to come. Next up is a safety, Devin Grant, 6'4", 190 from Buffalo. He has two years of eligibility remaining. He's a former four-star as well, 139th ranked player in the portal and the ninth ranked safety. He was a first-team All-Mac performer last year, and his stats were 79 tackles, five interceptions, a forced fumble, and two fumble recoveries. Now, rounding out their top five in the transfer portal is a wide receiver also from Georgia, Jackson Meek, 6'2", 205. He should have two or more years remaining of eligibility as well. He's a former three-star, 276th player in the portal and the 50th ranked wide receiver. Now, that number might seem kind of high, but we have to take into consideration that there are over 1,200 guys 
in the portal this year. He only had a handful of catches in his career so far at Georgia. He saw a lot more time in the special teams unit, but he should be able to find his way onto the field for the Orange. Now, moving on from the transfer portal, let's get into the top five commits from this recruiting class. Starting with four-star tight end, Jamie Tremble. He's 6'4", 210 from Wesleyan High School in Norcross, Georgia. He's the 196th ranked player nationally, the 13th ranked tight end in the country, and the 23rd ranked player in Georgia, which if you've seen any of these episodes before, or if you have, you know, just general knowledge of recruiting when it comes to high school, there's really a couple states that you could compare to Georgia, and that would be, you know, Florida, Texas, Cali, when it comes to how deep the talent is. So being, you know, 23rd in Georgia, he would definitely be a top 15 to top 10 guy in almost every other state. Um, He was the Georgia Region 7 AAA Offensive Player of the Year, caught 55 passes for 890 yards and 11 touchdowns. That is via max preps. He lined up mostly outside as a wide receiver, so he's going to need to learn how to, you know, block and line up on the ball as a D1 tight end. I'm sure that'll take probably a year. We might not see him this coming year. He's already a great pass catcher, though, so as soon as his blocking catches up, he'll be ready to contribute. And if the last name seemed familiar, that is because he is a brother of the Panthers tight end, Tommy Tremble. Next up is a four-star wide receiver, Emmanuel Ross, 6'2", 190 from Red Bank Catholic in Red Bank, New Jersey. 280th ranked player nationally, the 47th ranked wide receiver in the country, and the fourth ranked player in the state of New Jersey. He helped lead his team to an 11-1 season and a state championship. He was originally committed to Stanford, but flipped to Syracuse later in the year. Next up is a four-star edge, King Joseph Edwards, 6'4", 230 from Mill Creek High School in Hoshton, Georgia. Excuse me if I mispronounced that. He's the 410th ranked player nationally, 32nd ranked edge, and the 52nd ranked player in the state of Georgia. His 2023 stats consisted of 34 tackles, four tackles for loss, and six sacks. Next up is this three-star running back, Yasin Willis, 6'1", 220 from St. Joseph Regional in Montvale, New Jersey. He is the 489th ranked player nationally, the 38th ranked running back, and the ninth player in the state of New Jersey. As a junior, he ran for 1,100 yards and 17 touchdowns on 5.99 yards per carry while catching four passes for 29 yards. As a senior, he only played in eight games, or Max Preps only has eight games of data up. It's kind of different school to school. He ran for 682 yards and 12 touchdowns on 5.3 yards per carry, also adding 13 receptions for 196 yards. Rounding out their top five is a three-star wide receiver, Jalen Hornsby. 6'2", 195 from Winslow Township High School in Atco, New Jersey. He is the 560th ranked player nationally, the 78th ranked wide receiver, and the 12th ranked player in New Jersey. He was originally committed to Texas A&M, but flipped from there. Now, moving out of their you know, top commits, let's get into their depth chart notes for this coming up year. They're returning, like I mentioned earlier, their top running back, LaQuint Allen. And they're also bringing in two running backs in this class. So the running back room is fine. Quarterback room, obviously, led by Kyle McCord. And there are two young guys behind him as well, including a transfer from last year and one that is coming in this class. The wide receiver room is returning their top three pass catchers and adding two more through recruiting and adding two more from the portal, that Georgia duo that we talked about earlier. The tight end room is returning Dan Valari and Max Mang, as well as adding their top recruit, the Tremble brother, and another tight end along the way as well. The O-line group is scarce but young. They're adding two guys from recruiting and two guys from the portal. We'll have to figure out how time gets allotted there when it comes to playing time. I'm assuming it goes to the older guys, but it's really built up of a lot of younger guys in the group as a whole. The DB group is a solid mix of experience and youth, and they're bringing in two guys from the portal. No one, though, from this recruiting class, so they seem to think that they were just a couple guys away from getting the production that they wanted out of this DB group. If they didn't, they obviously would have targeted some guys from this year's class. The linebacker room is majority sophomore and freshman, so there's time to develop that group. Plus, they're adding two guys from this year's recruiting class as well. 
The D-line group is kind of thin. It only has two upperclassmen, and the rest are sophomore and freshmen. And then also they're adding three transfers and three kids from this recruiting class. So we're definitely seeing a focus on a certain area for Syracuse here. When it comes to the future success of the team, obviously, you know, the ACC play this year wasn't the best and leaves a lot to be desired. But bringing in talent from Georgia, bringing in Kyle McCord from Ohio State, this is just going to be a completely different Syracuse team, and I think for the better next year. Now, before we wrap up, I have to mention TotemPoleNation.com is scrolling in the bottom. That's where you can get any Totem Pole merch that you want. That's hats, t-shirts, sweatshirts, long sleeve shirts, cups, bags. If you want clothes for your baby, we got that too. Everything is at TotemPoleNation.com, scrolling in the ticker. As always, shout out to Sideline Sports Network. As always, Thank you for watching Totem Pole Nation. You guys are the best. And as for the Syracuse Orange, I'll let you guys in on a secret. I'm a Virginia Tech fan. So as optimistic as I think you guys should be, I really hope it doesn't work out for you. But that is all we have today. All jokes, obviously. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.